Hi, I'm Annika Lidne and this is a new episode of the Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm in Berlin with Mattias Svensson of Bloglovin and we're going to talk about young entrepreneurs, uh, the new ways of creation and some startup tips. So uh, stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas away the heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Clear use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Clear use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East to Africa Bet you be thanking God This is, yep. this is the Swedish Startup Sessions Hi, welcome back to Swedish Startup Sessions And I'm here with Mattias Svensson from Bloglove and, and we're at the end of the next conference in Berlin And just, just spoke on the fashion track Fashion Yeah uh, Bloglove is... Do you, do you still consider yourself a startup because it's like f four years you've been going on right now? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a startup. Uh -huh. uh, we're still eating pizza late hours, <laughs> and coding and working, so it's still a startup. Yeah. So tell me a little about yourself and, and uh, how, why did you start uh, blog loving? Because you had, even though you're really young, still. <laughs> Uh, you have several companies behind you, right? Uh, so, yeah, so definitely several several projects. Yeah. So we st we started in the end of high school with a bar community. Yeah. And the whole goal with that one was to drink, get drinks for free. <laughs> uh, and we we ended up working every weekend for one year, and then decided that it sucked and. Uh, and uh, trash that project. Yeah. Uh, and you're working with your brother, right? Yeah, my brother yeah. and uh, three other co-founders. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. So. And then after that project, we decided to to focus more on fashion. Yeah. Uh, because we seen that uh, Kinsa, like popular Swedish blogger, yeah, had surpassed the uh, Caravina traffic. Yeah. So we thought, like, okay, if we can gather all these fashionistas in one place, that yeah. could be quite interesting. Um, so we worked on that for like six months, and showed them the product, and they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're quite disappointed and quite frustrated, because we've been going on for like one and a half years. Yeah. Um, and then whilst talking to, uh, to these fashion bloggers, they were friends of friends, we kind of got, got to know them and saw that they were following a lot of blogs, yeah. um, and they were doing it through the bookmarks. So um, I think the idea gradually evolved, and like we decided to do like, okay, let's build something really fast, really simple, because we've been wrong two times before. <laughs> like, let's just test this fast and see what, what happens, and it uh, and it worked. So. Blog loving is basically a web-based RSS reader for fashion blogs, right? Um, yeah, or it's now on your iPhone or Android, yeah. and uh, but you can follow any blog. Yeah, basically. but you you have focused on the fashion community. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we focus a lot on uh, we call it like self-expression blogs. Yeah, uh, which is like mommy blogs, interior design, uh, food blogs. Like categories where maybe you follow 50 blogs, but they only update five times per week. Yeah. Um, what's not like news categories? It's just like you follow Mashable, it's Google Reader. It's <laughs> like pfft. yeah. Uh, it's and I know that when when you launched that, there was was especially within the, co the startup community a lot of uh, criticism that people said, well, you know, we got Google Reader. What on on earth do we need? Uh, another RSS read before. Right. Uh, we still get that every day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I guess the peop people who, who say that, like, you should not know that how many people who are reading a lot of blogs yeah. but aren't using the tools. 
and that the tools are a bit complicated. Yeah. Um, no, that's what we try to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Just make it simple, and it's it's okay if people don't like it. Yeah. As long as. Others and I, I would say also that we can't only have like one RSS reader for everybody. I think that uh, Blog Lovin is really like attractive product visually as well. You use Blog Lovin. I use mostly Google Reader yeah, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like it um, okay. a lot. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm following such a massive amount of, of Interesting. feeds. Um, but what is uh, what would you say is disruptive about blog loving? How have you captured your market? Not much disruptive about it, mm. really. It's it's just making finding your niche more. No, it's it's making something that is disruptive but not understandable. Yeah understandable mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's like RSS uh, in itself RSS readers it's like bringing news to people yeah like fetching the best stuff online to you and that's something disruptive uh, just people didn't get that uh, didn't know why they should use it even though they had the need we just tried to make it super simple for people. yeah so so how, how do you monetize really what's your business model um, S sell a lot of ads, yeah. And uh, since we have very like, we have, like, um, people who really, really love fashion or design, it, it's quite, quite easy to like talk to brands now that we have enough scale. And yeah. say like, here's a, here's a here's a million people who love fashion and want to stay on top. Yeah. Like, is that interesting for you? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So do you think that we will see more, uh, because I think that when you see a lot of startups like here at Next, uh, most of them are really general. Um, it's like photo sharing app or health apps, but it's not really targeted toward a specific market or a specific niche group. Do you think we will see more of that? Uh, no. No? <laughs> Maybe, but I think the, the problem in general, like with competitions and VC community, yeah. is that every everyone wants you to target an enormous market right away. Yeah. And uh, you, like if that thinking, like if how if how you start out, uh, like how how you start out is just a way of getting started. You know? Yeah. Um, like Facebook started with just targeting Harvard students, yeah. it, it didn't end there, but it, it got them the initial traction that you need. And I think like startup competitions, if you say that you're very niche or very focused on a certain market, then uh, everyone says that your potential goes down yeah. and they don't really take into account that you'll change or adapt, yeah. 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 which is... Um, which is so. Yeah. So so how did you first start out? How did you get funding? Uh, so we first started with raising uh, money from uh, Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, that had some social media properties. They're like corporate investor you could call them. Yeah. Um, so we went pretty easy because we started talking to them about different kinds of integrations. And then they kind of used to invest in young entrepreneurs. Mm. So they just said, like, here's a bag of money, do you want it? And uh, we were 19, so we said, like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we bought our beer that year. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> a lot of beer. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So. so, so have you taken in more money, or have they been able to to fund your you simple single handedly? So. So what happened when you give 19 year olds a bunch of money is that they'll burn it pretty fast <laughs> <laughs> on beer, like trips everywhere, yeah. and, you know. Um, and then we got to a point where we basically like looked at our company and said like, if we keep going this direction, we're gonna go bankrupt like in two three months. Mm. And it really got us to like focus on um, focus on. 
like selling, yeah. selling advertisement, and uh, we just call a lot of like costs yeah. like really fast, and, uh, and and like start selling more, and eventually we became profitable. Um, and then uh, recently we uh, uh, sold Wyatt shares. Okay. Um, and uh, sold them to uh, uh, BetaWorks. Mm -hmm. They're New York based. Yeah. Um, it's a big star of VC yeah. founder. Yeah. And then uh, and then also to um, uh, a private investor, okay. um, uh, Bruce Jaffe, who's uh, used to be head of M&A for Glam and. Uh, wow. And uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. and uh, he was his his wife is a low driving power user. Okay. So that's how we got in contact with him. Yeah. And then he, he helped us get like Peter works involved. So so where is your your like your, the majority of your users are they still in Sweden or is it the American fashion scene or Japanese? Because you're really a very international company today. Right. So I think like 15% 15, 15 is Swedish now, yeah. and the rest is from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it is coming from the US and UK. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, one, one of these magic things with, with startup is, especially in, in your category, is how, how do you get all these users? Uh, and how do you get the product that actually spreads to Japan and to US and so on? So how did how did that happen? How did you do that? Right. Um, I think I think it's a combination of uh, three things. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is of course like kind of, kind of piecing a need, which is yeah. Everyone knows that. The, se the second part is. Uh, it's not talked about that much, especially if we have a consumer product. And it's about like getting it, making it really, really, really easy to get started with product. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean like really, really, really easy. Yeah. Um, sometimes I see like really good ideas, but it's too hard to get started. Mm -hmm. And they and they decide to focus more on what's next, what's new features. Yeah. And uh, forget that really it's about uh, just making it a bit easier. Yeah. Maybe create like a pop up, do this. You know, you could. Suggested user yeah. list or follower lists and so on. So, yeah, so once we started working with onboarding more, then like started getting a lot more traction. And the third part is just uh, the hustle. Mm -hmm. And it's just like uh, trying to figure out who your audience is and um, being quite aggressive at trying to recruit that audience. Yeah. It's like if you're like log loving or startled, uh, then you need to put power in like recruiting the end users yeah. where they are and not perhaps like trying to get on TechCrunch because mm -hmm. that won't help you grow. No. And um, I think that a lot of startups actually focus on TechCrunch because that's cool. And that only works within a very small early adopter niche. Yeah. So were you like contacting uh, big fashion bloggers to get them on board, or yeah, um, to to you know put blog love in buttons on their blogs and so on? Yeah. So we we emailed like with names and discussions. Yeah. Uh, tens of thousands of bloggers. Yeah. And we still do, and uh, it's. Uh, you have to. Mm -hmm. so. And I also know that previously you have made collaborations with uh, uh, online e-commerce sites and, and so on. Still, uh, still good money. Yeah. <laughs> to drive traffic. Uh, not not mainly to drive traffic, but. No, I mean drive yeah. traffic to them. Right. To yeah. Drive traffic to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you see your, your biggest challenges are right now? Um, biggest challenges? Right, so I think this is a part that I wish I knew like four years ago. <laughs> but so everybody can really pay attention right now. I think, I think like the biggest challenges right now is um, 
it's, it's building a great team yeah. and building uh, building the team that supports the team mm -hmm. and do it simultaneously um, and, and, and really try to build a great culture where that enables you to uh, recruit the best mm -hmm. and it's something a lot harder uh, in practice than uh, just reading about yeah. it, because it's so often you, you know you read you read an article and they're like, step one, <laughs> hire only hire rock stars. And you're yeah. like, yes. <laughs> step two, great company culture. Great it's company like, culture. yes, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and then the, like, in reality, it's like really really hard. Yeah. Uh, something you really need to work on, and it's it's a product in itself. Mm -hmm. And we we've been so focused on like just making a good product that we haven't thought about that part so much. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that, that we need to grow, it's like it's becoming like shit. This is something we need to like do really, really well. Yeah. Right away, and it's uh, the biggest challenge. So, will you uh, the team? How many are you right now? Uh, that's right. Six, six, six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Will uh, is your plan to to stay in Sweden, or will you move to the US now that you have US investors, or? Sometimes they, they ask you to move closer. Yeah, um, they didn't. No? Um, I, I think, like right now, well, you never know what happens. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, we're gonna recruit uh, a few more people in yeah. Stockholm. And then, um, then uh, yeah, let's build a good product. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, do you have any competitors in your space? I mean, apart from Google Reader. Uh, right. So there's another startup called Hello Cotton, uh -huh. which is basically started out like as a blog diving club. Yeah. Um, and they're they're doing quite okay actually. Mm -hmm. they're, they're mainly in France. Um, so I'm really impressed with them. Like the good, good you guys. You feel that they like are spurring you on to build a better product than if you didn't have any competitors? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like uh, it's a reason to work the extra hour, mm -hmm. uh, and that's good. Um, and uh, I think it keeps you like yeah, yeah. You have you have to like. It makes you focus a lot more on like what what are we gonna do now? Like what are the next steps? Like yeah. it makes you because uh, otherwise you you'll always be worried. Mm -hmm. Like okay, they added this feature. What happened to you? Yeah. You know? Like well, what is your roadmap? And like how are you gonna go forward? Uh, and stay true to like uh, your own and the team's vision before you're going. So what, what is your vision in a few years? Where, where, where do you see yourself at? Uh, we said we want to become the new scheme for the blogosphere. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's, that's what we're working on. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying the fashion blogosphere, but saying the entire blogosphere. Yeah. And uh, like how, how we make it easy to access your newsfeed, like on the mobile. How, how do you make your newsfeed more social? Like how can I see which blogs does Annika follow, yeah. which posts do you like, just make it a more... So, so, so how do you see uh, companies like for instance Flipboard that's been really uh, hailed as an innovator within the, the both the, the aggregation sphere but also graphically? Yeah, they're, they're an amazing team Yeah. and uh, I wish I could rec recruit several <laughs> people from there. Yeah. Um, but do you think they lack the community that you have? I think, I think yeah. Because we're, they are more an app. Right, so I think we're doing different things yeah. uh, or had the different directions. I think what Flipboard is doing is like basically getting taking all the data they have on your social communities mm -hmm. like Facebook and Twitter and trying, and trying to display them in a more tablet, iPad, uh, iPhone suitable way. Yeah. Well, what we're doing is more like uh, it's more more going to, towards the Pinterest direction, where it's going to be more about like making all our users social and um, uh, and, and having them build like a, like a news social network yeah. where all the individuals 
uh, create content for the other people. And in, in your, your talk earlier today, you, you talked a lot about the, the change of of media that now it's it's um, reblogging, repinning, and curation that is really big. Where, where do you see that going? Where do you see that the next step, especially within the, the you know hyper consumer sphere like fashion and lifestyle? Right. I don't know really, but I know that we're gonna take a lot of that into blogging right now. Yeah. Um, so that the readers become curators, mm -hmm. so they they become filters for their friends, even yeah. if they might not publish stuff themselves. Yeah. And uh, I don't know where that's where that's going. I just know that there's going to be more of that. So we're getting really the the, the filters that Clay Shirky have been talking about, lot, lot about, that we're not really suffering from information overload, but rather filter failure. So you create yeah. the hyper filter, so to speak. Exactly. And uh, yeah. I think like one of the most interesting. Uh, Internet assets right now is uh, Insta Paper. Yeah. Because I really want to know what my friends on Insta Paper is reading, what are they liking, and it's it's like a real gem because that's like this is really good shit. Uh, but I can't, I can't see it, and mm. like I can see it, but it's it's quite poorly made. Yeah. So I don't use it as like a discovery tool every day, but I think like those kinds of like those kinds of like single player mode products mm -hmm. today, like Instapaper, are meant to be social. Um, I know where I'm going with that. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so uh, to to wrap this up. Um, what do you think about the Swedish startup scene right now, compared to when you got started out? Uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, and, and especially, we didn't know about the startup scene when we started. <laughs> I don't think there was much of a startup scene, yeah. frankly. Yeah. It was, exactly, there wasn't a lot. And what's cool is that like every success, every Swedish success, creates more successes. Yeah. It's like uh, say Tiktail, like uh, like the founders are from like creating uh, like design for Spotify or rap uh, or like from Stardoll like yeah. getting together. Uh, they have an interesting perspective because they've seen how different startups work mm -hmm. and, and try to create the best of it. Yeah. Or uh, or uh, uh, I settle like coming from trade doubler and other startups like getting together and creating something mm -hmm. nice together and it'll be interesting like in two three years like people will come from those companies and start their own stuff and then and then people who made maybe they've made some money will be able to invest in them so I think I'm really optimistic about yeah. startup scene and I think it's quite been quite interesting here in Berlin that the the Berlin startup everybody is referring to is of course SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, and we had Readmill, you've been here, uh, several other Swedish entrepreneurs, but we only had uh, Singlink from Finland, but no no Danish startups, no Norwegian startups, no Icelandic startups. So the Norwegians, they <laughs> I don't think they even just rely on oil. Yeah, I don't think they even have a startup scene. <laughs> But oh. <laughs> no, it's, it's sad. I would really love to see some some great Norwegian startups because I think it's they will need it. I've I've seen one and yeah. uh, they were so funded by an oil oil fund uh -huh. that they just kept on building a bunch of features. Yeah, and then nothing happened. Uh, so too much money. <laughs> too much money. Is this good? Yeah, yes. Well, thank you for this interview. Um, and bye-bye from Berlin.